Okay, what I'm going to do is make a video on how to find what your superheat should be. I see 900 videos on there, the same old bullshit. Check, change your pressure and the temperature, and take your thermometer and put it on the suction line, and that's how you get your superheat. Well, that's great. There's 900 million videos like that. So what happens if you come to a unit and it says on there, it's got a scale, you take the door off and it says wet bulb and it says ambient temperature. What do you do with that? Well, I've never seen a video on YouTube about it, so I don't think anybody out there knows and I've come to like 900 units and every one of them either undercharged or overcharged, so I've got to start teaching people how to really do it. Okay, what's wet, what's dry bulb? Dry bulb is basically your temperature on your thermostat. This is reading 85 degrees right there. See it? Okay, now on this on this nice little tool that I don't think anybody in the whole world has ever seen, you have your wet bulb and your dry bulb. Okay, what's your wet bulb? Is this string right here? What we do is is we dip it in water. Right here, see? And we submerge all the way up to here which is our which is this uh, wet uh, cloth that is on the on a thermometer we put the lid on it and we spin it around in the house for approximately one minute so we're spinning this thing okay let's say we spun it for one minute we're not gonna spin it for one whole minute okay we're gonna look at the thermometer it's going to say our wet bulb temperature is 69. Okay, that's our wet bulb. So now what are we going to do with the, what does wet bulb mean? Well, that's it. It's something wet on the end of the thermometer that you spin inside the return air, which is the air in this room. That's what returns to your furnace. That is called return air. We find out what our return wet bulb temperature is. We're going to call it 69. Okay, now we have that information. Okay, now we found out what our wet bulb is inside the house, which is our return air back to the furnace. Now, you can get yourself a probe that connects to a meter and put yourself a little cotton swab on the end of there, stick it actually in your return on your furnace and get your wet bulb that way too. Or you can get one of those fancy little spinning tools that I got that no one has ever seen in their life and do it that way. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to get your ambient temperature. What is ambient temperature? The outside air. Not in the sun, but in the shade. That's where you want to read it. Let's say we're going to actually look at it. It's 84 degrees. Now we know 69 is our wet bulb and 84 is our outdoor temperature. So now what are we going to do with that information? We're going to find out what our superheat is by just using that information. Okay, we have our wet bulb temperature which is 69. We have the ambient temperature which is 84. And now we're going to do a formula to get your superheat right every single time. Okay, basically what you're going to do is you're going to take that 69 which folks there is another way to get your wet bulb temperature you can basically take a q-tip pull the head off of it put it onto a probe that is connected to your meter which has the setting for temperature and you'll have your little um, couple uh, coupler which is which is actually a wire with a little probe on the end you stick your little q-tip on the end of that probe dip it in water, stick it in the return of the furnace, and that will give you even a more precise wet bulb temperature, okay? Or you can get yourself the neat little tool that I had that spins around, you dip the end in water, and that will give you both dry bulb and wet bulb temperature. So we use that device, which I don't think anybody ever seen one in their life, because I've asked many techs and they've never seen one, is 69 degrees okay so we have 69 wet bulb temperature in the home we have 84 degree temperature outside now what do we do with that there's a formula the formula is 69 which is our wet bulb temperature times 3 equals 207 okay then we're going to take the 207 
okay, and we're going to minus 80, which in this part of northern United States, the humidity, blah, blah, there's a reason for the formula. We're not getting into that. I'm not getting technical. I'm already making your head swim. You minus that 80, and that's going to give you 127, right down 127. Now you're going to minus the ambient temperature, which is 84, okay? That is going to give you 43. Now you're going to divide that by 2, and guess what? We have a superheat of 21.5. That, with the humidity in the house, the house temperature at wet bulb, and the outside ambient temperature, and the formula I just gave you, will give you the precise superheat you should have at the condenser. Now you can take your funk, your gauges, you can hook it up on the, low, on the suction side, see what the pressure is, convert the pressure into temperature, take the temperature of your suction line, and see what your superheat is. If it isn't 21.5 or roughly within 3 to 4 degrees, you need to, you need to adjust it. If the superheat is high, you put some gas in it, it comes down. You try to get as close as you can to 21.5 without going under. You don't want to overcharge the system. And that's how you charge a unit precisely. Now, you can also do this by taking the cover off, not all the systems, but most of the systems on the back of the cover, the top of the scale will say wet bulb, the side scale will say ambient temperature, the inside return wet bulb temperature, which is the scale on top, you would find 69. And then you would go over here and find your outside ambient temperature, not in the sun, in the shade. And you would come to the scale, and that's going to tell you your super heat. But what happens if it got burnt off, ripped off, faded? you got to know this, or you're just guessing, okay? Uh, now, there is also another rule that you have to follow. Fixed piston is superheat. You can use this formula. On a TXV valve, you cannot use this formula. You must do what? Subcooling, which that's a whole nother video. So there you have it. That's how you find your superheat every single time, and that's how you set it if you, uh, if you want to be correct. And I have never had a system overcharged or undercharged. I've never had an issue in 30 years. So this is how I do it, and it comes out perfect every time. So next video is going to be on T TXV valves, how to set the charge. And then the next video after that is going to how to properly size a capillary tube and how to properly size a capillary tube if it's missing. If someone, another tech came in and was doing some work on it, the guy paid him, he left, he, he took the capillary tube with him. What do you do? You know? So... I'm going to go over all those things, but right now we went over superheat. I taught you how to do a formula, which will get you your superheat every single time. And I've taught you how to identify your superheat on the panel on the back of the unit. I hope this helps you, because I'm tired of coming to units either overcharged or undercharged. Let's all get on the same book here. And stop making videos on taking your suction pressure and converting it into temperature and taking your temperature at your suction line to get your super heat. Big deal. Big whoop. If you don't know what it's supposed to be, then who cares what it is? Okay? All right. Thank you for watching.